So today I'm talking about a P0230 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P0230 code? Well, it's a fuel pump primary circuit. And what does this mean? Well, basically the computer's seeing some kind of problem with the wiring going to the fuel pump. It's having some kind of issue. The computer's monitoring what the voltage should be at the fuel pump. And if it's too low or too high, then it's gonna set out this P0230 code. And so it's gonna have to be troubleshooted to know why. And one thing to note about a P0230 code is that sometimes it can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot. Sometimes it can be something easy, but quite often it can get into like the wiring and different things like this. And if it does get into the wiring, then it can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot. So be sure to keep that in mind. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0230 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is a bad fuse or a bad fuel pump relay. So first thing to do is find all the fuses that are related to the fuel pump and the fuel pump relay and be sure that they're good. The fuses are usually straightforward to check. If there's some different ways to go about checking the relays, quite often there'll be other relays that have the same numbers on them that you can swap out temporarily just to see if it solves the problem. Be sure to check the numbers on the top that they are the same. And so, for example, if you see the horn relay and it has the same numbers, then you can temporarily swap it out and just see if it solves the problem. Or you could go test the horn and see if it works. And so that's one way you can go and check relays sometimes. You can also test these with a the multimeter. There's also an old school method where you just jumper it and things along these lines. But the first thing to go and do is be sure that your fuses are all good and that the fuel pump relay is good. If the fuses are all good and the fuel pump relay is good, then the next thing that needs to be done is to find out if the fuel pump is bad or if there is some kind of issue inside the wiring, like an open or a short or something like that. Because a bad fuel pump can cause this issue, but so can wiring. And again, there's some different ways to go about troubleshooting this. A very common method is to get a multimeter and test the voltages coming in at the fuel pump and be sure that you're getting the correct voltages. You will need to get a schematic or a diagram of what's going on with your particular vehicle since there will be differences for which pins are doing what and which wires are what and things like this. But basically, if you know which pin should be getting voltage back to the fuel pump, you could put the key in the on position and you can go back there and check it and check to see if you are getting voltage back to the fuel pump. If you are getting the correct voltage back to the fuel pump and there's no problem there, then very likely that fuel pump's gone bad and it needs to be replaced. So that's one method that's fairly common that people go about troubleshooting in with. If you're not getting the correct voltage back to the fuel pump, then that's going to be more of an issue. You're going to need to get a wiring schematic where all the wires are going and what they're going to and different things like this for your particular vehicle. And you have to go through and check everything and try to find what's going on inside the wiring. And like I said before, this can be difficult to do but you'll need to go through all these components and be sure everything looks like it's good. One thing to mention about this is that some vehicles, not all vehicles, but some vehicles like Fords and things like this, they have what's called a fuel pump inertia switch. This switch is going to be hidden somewhere. What it does is that if there's an accident, it's supposed to detect this and automatically shut off the fuel pump. Sometimes these get triggered for some reason and they need to be reset. So if you are having some kind of issue in the wiring, you're not getting voltage back to the fuel pump, all your fuses are good, all your relays are good, go check to see if your vehicle does have a fuel pump inertia switch and just be sure it hasn't triggered, which will shut down that fuel pump. And the last thing on the list is going to be a bad fuel pump driver module, sometimes called a controller. Not all vehicles have these, but many do nowadays. It's basically just a small little dedicated computer that's controlling that fuel pump. If your vehicle does have this, then again, there's some different ways to go about troubleshooting it. You basically go get a diagram what all the pins do and things like this and you check all the wires and everything going to that fuel pump driver module and as long as there's no issues inside the wiring and there's no issues with the fuel pump then very likely there is an issue with the fuel pump driver module some mechanics when they think they do have a bad fuel pump driver module they'll jumper the wires going to the fuel pump just to see if it kicks on if you do use that method you will need to know exactly which pins do what because obviously things can get shorted out or things like this. So for this reason, I don't recommend this method, but a lot of people do this. Basically, they find the voltage that's going to the fuel pump driver module, and then the pin's going out to the fuel pump, and they'll just send like 12 volts to the fuel pump and just see if it works. And if it does work, then they know that it's not inside the wiring, and they know the fuel pump driver module's gone bad. Like I said, I don't suggest this method. It's best to use a meter and just check all your wires and be sure that you're getting all the correct voltages and there's no opens or shorts inside of there. But the last thing on the list is going to be a bad fuel pump driver module. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0230 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.